The following program is a part of the TCC Connection, Tulsa Community College's student newspaper. Episodes of the season of podcasts for a day include programming made available by the electronic communication class during the 2022 spring semester. Students were tasked with the creation of their own podcast episode. For the full season of podcasts for a day provided by the course, visit tccconnection.com or whichever platform you may be listening to. Enjoy the following episode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our first episode of Artisans Online. In this podcast, we will explore the topic of creative hobbies, as well as discuss starting online businesses for your art. My name is Haley Newby, and I'm an Etsy seller of three years. I'm passionate about all things artistic, so I'm really excited to dive into our discussion today. That being said, I would also like to introduce our guest for today, my friend, Matthew Roberts. Matt is a painter who has recently opened an Etsy shop of his own. Thanks for coming today, Matt. Thank you for having me. So I was hoping you could share some of your experiences with us today regarding your art and how you're um, using it to create an online business. So first, can you tell us how your journey with painting began? Yeah, of course. I started the process of painting and drawing as a hobby of mine when I was young. I grew up with artists in the family, some, some of which went to college for art and have been very successful. I started taking lessons with my aunt and watching art videos on YouTube and practicing my skills so eventually I'd be able to show my own work. When I was 19, I started selling my paintings online on Instagram. Although not everyone wants to buy amateur paintings, I still built up a small following. I spoke with some Etsy sellers like yourself and was convinced that I could sell more on an online shop and hopefully turn my paintings into a real income source. I think that's awesome. And it's really amazing how you started to build up your business kind of just through Instagram. So I'm also curious, what do you paint the most and where do you draw your inspiration? Yeah, honestly, I love to paint nature and I've been really inspired by nature in general. Mm -hmm. Forests and beaches are honestly the most fun for me to paint. I'm also just always inspired by other artists that I see online. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that, um, being inspired by other artists. It's always really cool to scroll through Etsy or um, Instagram and just see all the different types of art that people make. So um, you mentioned starting your shop through Etsy, and how do you feel about it so far? Honestly, I like it, but all the fees and everything kind of makes it a transition. I know opening at the beginning, it costs like 25 cents even to start the shop. Yeah, (laughs) Um, I hear that, but I actually really like how convenient it is to use. All you really have to do to start the shop is make an account, choose your name, and set up your payment information. Obviously, there are other things you have to do, like... um, do your research on the competition and things like that, but they do make it an easy process for you. That's true. Their app for sellers has made it super easy to find out what shoppers are viewing the most and lets me know what style of paintings I should post more of. Yeah, definitely. Um, The shop statistics feature is really, really helpful. So um, based on what you've seen so far, would you recommend Etsy to our listeners? Absolutely. There are several great options for starting out. Like I said, Etsy is easy to use. I also looked at a at a, a website called Big Cartel, but Etsy makes it easier for customers to find you without a direct link. Exactly, and that kind of makes it a good place to start. So um, since committing to turning this creative hobby into an income source, how many hours of work per week would you say you put into your online shop? Uh, right now, I would say it ranges anywhere from 25 to 35 hours per week, but I'm still starting out on a new platform. There's a lot to do from taking new product photos to listing each painting and self-promoting on social media. I also have another job. Like I said, ideally, this will become a part-time job for me, and those hours will start to regulate to about 15 to 20 per week. Yeah, I completely understand that. When I started my Etsy shop for my jewelry, I poured all of my spare time into it. It's kind of hard to um, regulate your own hours. The prospect of turning a hobby into a job is just so exciting. You kind of get carried away with it. Yeah, that's true. You kind of have to be self-disciplined in that respect. You have to set your own time and kind of make sure you have that free time so you don't get burned out of it. Yeah, that's true. You and I are not the most experienced online shop owners in the world, but I think that is a pretty valuable piece of advice we can offer our listeners, um, especially those kind of thinking of creating a shop. So I would like to change the subject just slightly and ask you, how important do you think it is to have a creative hobby in general? Yeah, I would say it's very important. Having a creative hobby is honestly really huge. Mm -hmm. It helps to stimulate your mind and allows you to put your put your thoughts on paper and really dig into your own emotions. Yeah, 
I love how being creative allows you to kind of check in with yourself and just have an outlet for whatever you're going through. So um, on that note, I read an article recently that had some interesting information on the topic of creative hobbies. Um, so the article is by Casey Lesser, and she writes about a study done by a subscription service for online creative learning in 2019. So firstly, it found that 75% of Americans actually have creative hobbies and others would like to have one. Really? That's more than I would have actually guessed. I know. What, what's more, though, is that the article also talks about how creative processes have a similar effect on the body to meditation or yoga. Your blood pressure actually reduces during creative activities. So according to Casey Lesser, having a creative hobby and being fairly consistent with it can actually be enough to lessen symptoms of anxiety, depression, and um, even dementia further down the line. Wow, that's really crazy to consider. But I guess I do pain when I'm stressed and my emotions definitely show on paper. Yeah. So um, I just have one final question for you, Matt. Yes, please. So based on your experience selling through Instagram and through Etsy so far, do you have any advice for someone wanting to start an online business for their own creative products? Yeah, I would say, honestly, take it one step at a time. I mean, I'm still learning this, this platform myself, mm -hmm. but what I do know is that you have to keep the big picture in mind when you're taking the small steps that feel mundane and pointless. I think that's some excellent advice. And what would yours be? Um, well, I think the best piece of advice I have would be uh, from my sister, actually, another online art seller who unfortunately couldn't join us today, but she said to create what makes you happy. Um, she said it's important to make something that sells well, but start out creating something that you enjoy and creating things you enjoy and just find what sells the best out of those things. Yeah, I completely agree with that. That has a lot of truth in it. Well, um, I think that's probably a good place to end. Thank you so much for joining me and sharing some of your experiences today, Matt. It's been really great to hear your insight on selling artistic products online, as well as just discussing the importance of creative hobbies in everyone's lives. Thank you again for inviting me to speak with you on your podcast. It was really great talking with you. It was a fun experience. And thank you. Um, and thank you to our listeners today. We wish you the best of luck in your creative online business pursuits. If you're interested in more information about selling on Etsy, you can visit etsy.com slash sell. They have a whole section answering frequently asked questions about selling through their platform. Etsy is a great contender, but be sure to do your own research to find out which selling platform works best for you. For any questions about today's podcast, you can find me at Haley Newby on Instagram or Facebook. For Matt's shop, you can visit readysetart918 on etsy.com and have an amazing day.